Hi there, my name is Jessica Drossen, and I create textures, overlays, and actions for photographers. Today I'm going to show you how to use some of the elements from my Force of Nature pack number one set. Pack number one is all about weather effects. Today I'm going to show you how to edit a snow weather effect shot. This is my model, Brianna. We shot this in Southern California and we didn't have any snow to speak of, so I invented some. And you can kind of see how I can transform this image. Obviously, I, I shot it against a light gray background, and that's allowing me a little bit more ease uh, and speed when I go ahead and edit this now with uh, textures and actions. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the overlay that's called Ice, and I'm going to simply drag it in and I'm going to make sure that it's going edge to edge here. Now you can do a lot of things at this point. You can lower your opacity. Uh, you could put this in multiply mode. I think what I'm going to do is keep it in multiply mode, but I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit. So I'm sort of doing two things. Now what I'm going to have here is a mask, a quick mask. If you are in Elements, you cannot make masks, unfortunately. So what you're going to do is the areas where I'm masking, you're going to have to actually be erasing with your eraser tool. But for Photoshop people, I'm going to show you with, with masks. I like that it's non-destructive to the layer itself so I can go back and make changes easier. When you're using a mask, you want to make sure that you're using your black soft brush. So I'm selecting black. I'm making sure that I'm painting into my mask channel itself, not into the overlay. This is how you can tell that the overlay is selected. It gets a little extra box around it. I want to be in the mask, so I'm making sure that the box is around the mask. Now I'm going to go ahead, select my brush. Uh, get a fairly large brush and with fairly low opacity I'm going to drop this down to about 15 and 15 in the flow, you know, 16. And now I'm going to just mask out some of this overlay. Here we go. Uh, now I like some of the color effects that are happening with the bluish tones that are being added. So what I'm going to do, instead of masking them all out, I'm going to go and make sure that now I have the overlay itself selected and I am going to use my lasso tool. I'm going to set the feather fairly high, maybe at 100, so I have a nice soft edge. And I'm going to select this area around her face so that I don't get all of this detail from the overlay. And we're going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and you can sort of preview it here. In this instance, I'm going to lower the amount of the blur just a little bit to about 33. I think that's looking good. I hit OK, and maybe I'm going to take a little bit more out with mask, and I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. And there we go. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the colors here. I'm happy with the amount of ice. So I'm going to leave this alone and now I'm going to show you how to use one of the actions. In this case, you could use fog in this. If you wanted to make it a little more foggy and mysterious, I would simply hit the play button. And you can see it sort of hazes it back. You can go in and you can lower the opacity if you'd like to. Some other alternatives are you can go ahead and use some of the actions that I've included. Here's snowy day. That gives it more of a blue tone. You can lower that opacity to work here. This is going to feel probably a little too blue since I am using the overlay for tones. Uh, but just to show you, here's Snowy Day 2. This is another. And again, 
because of those overlay tones, I'm going to go ahead and reduce it about 50%. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you are the snow machine actions. So let's try snow machine number two. All right. Now, what you're going to do here is in Photoshop, you can go ahead and you can just use your mask and you can paint out any of these areas or, or lighten them. I'm going to raise my opacity here so that I can do this a little faster in this tutorial. I don't want to take them all out because I, I want to keep this believable. Um, and you, she would have some snow on her face. So if I was doing this for real, I'd probably be playing with this and making sure that I was very comfortable with the amount of snow I was showing on her. There we go. All right, that will, that'll work for now. Then, I say that and then I tweak it a little bit more, which is so me. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it this way, but just so you can see uh, with another overlay, so you can just really increase your depth. I'm going to go with snow number eight, and I'm going to show you a pitfall of using bridge and just dragging it in. What happens if you do that? Because I've had some people that have had some concerns. If you do that and then you place it and you, you say, okay, the issue is if you see this little tag down here in the photo itself, that means it's a smart object. Smart objects don't always respond so well to my actions. So what you're going to need to do is go ahead and under layer, rasterize, and change that smart object into a regular object if you are encountering any issues with any of the actions. If you're not, don't worry about it. I'm going to go to screen mode. These overlays were primarily built for screen mode or for hard light mode. Now I'm going to lower the opacity to, let's see, yeah, about 46%. And again, I'm going to create a quick mask. The users who are in elements, what you can do, here it is in normal. Because black in screen mode is essentially invisible, all you would need to do would be to paint with your black tool brush. That would effectively get rid of anything that you don't want to see since you can't mask. But for my Photoshop people, I'm going to go ahead and show you with the masking option. So we're going to go here, create a mask, and with a large brush, low opacity, low flow, I'm going to just, once again, allow for a little bit more of the detail to show up. All right. And I would probably fine tune that just a little bit more if this was being done for real, but basically we're there. I really appreciate you guys watching this tutorial with me. I hope you learned something. I hope you're really enjoying these overlays and actions and having a lot of creative fun with them. Thank you so much. Bye.